description of the three modes of material energy and all their varieties. And the Tatasta Shakti is the uh, living entity in the material world covered by the Bahiranga Shakti. And he, therefore, the living entity is called marginal. Marginal means that they are spiritual by nature, but materially covered. And therefore, they think themselves something other than who they actually are. So here, this is called ignorance. And this ignorance is compared to darkness. So we have a material body, but the body is not us. We have a subtle mind. The mind is also, the material mind is not us. The soul, we, the pure spiritual energy, my vamso jiva loke jivas bhuta sanatana mastasthastandi indriyani prakriti stani karshati. The word karshati means struggling. The living entity struggles in this material world because they identify with something that is not of their nature. So here we are covered by a material body and mind. Just like we go to sleep at night and we enter into a different state, and that sleep state we know is not the real state of my existence using the material example. And whatever happens in the sleep is just a part of the, the experience of the subtle body. So on the, when we go into sleep or we go into trance, or we lose consciousness of the external, we enter into the subtle, and that is another form of the material. But when we come out of that, we're into the gross form of the material. So either the subtle or the gross forms are simply coverings over the pure soul. So we, what do we do? Here we are in an unnatural situation, and the, Having a material body makes us think in relationship to the material body. We think of the identities that this material body have and its various categories of identities, such as male, female, what, what the nationality you are, uh, all the different identities that one can place upon one's physical existence. And then we have... Uh, uh, the uh, other aspect of that, and we consider the things that we have control of, such as our personal possessions, as being belonging to us because of the relationship it has with the material body and the material mind. So this is called Janasa Moham Yam Maham Mameti. This is all illusion. Uh, so we're in a world of illusion. <laughs> And how do we get out of it? First of all, the first step of getting out of it is not to identify with it. <laughs> Identification just enforces the illusion. So just thinking that we're different is, just, is not really enough to get out of the illusion or to bring us to our actual constitutional existence, which is pure spiritual existence. So here, Prabhupada explains in the purport, we have to use the gross body in the service of the Lord. And he uses examples, bringing water, cleansing the temple, making obeisances, etc. So for the gross body, it needs activities that are seemingly ordinary, but the, the uh, direction of the activity or the attention of the activity is for the pleasure of the Lord. In other words, this is the process of bhakti, doing something and offering the results of those activities to the Lord in devotion. And then we have the subtle mind. Prabhupada said, yeah, the subtle mind should be engaged in hearing the transcendental pastimes, thinking about them, chanting his holy name. So we have both subtle and more gross activities 
that the, 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 the body and the mind can get into, which will free us from this illusion. Because these activities are not part of the material energy. Devotional service is the internal energy of the Lord. It's called para, para prakriti or uh, daivi prakriti. It is daiva, divine, para, transcendental. And uh, it has nothing to do with anything material. So although the activities we perform and the activities other people perform in the material world are the same in many cases, most cases. Still, the purpose of the activity and the goal of the activity are different, and that's what is called devotional service. And so one comes under the influence of the uh, Daivi energy when one performs activities for the Lord. Gradually, this helps to awaken one's uh, spiritual awareness that I am actually different than everything around me. I have a material body, but I'm not the material body. I have activities, but they are spiritual activities. Therefore, they have nothing to do with the material world. As Prabhupada writes, karma and bhakti look the same from the external point of view, but they are completely different in the results that they bring. Karma binds one to more material activities and gives one a temporary result based on the nature of the activity. And uh, bhakti frees one from that material entanglement, awakens one's attention towards the service of the Lord and connects one with the Lord through the activity and uh, frees one from illusion and one starts to begin to understand that I am a soul. As these activities become intensified and regular and then when they become regular mam chayo vyabhicharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan savatityaitan brahma buyaya kalpateng. The one who engages in full devotional service does not fall down on at any time, at once transcends the modes of material nature and comes to the spiritual platform, the Bernard Brahman platform. So, um, as long as we remain in material activities, or even if we have material consciousness when we perform spiritual activities, we still have a tendency to identify with something we are not. And therefore, the results of our activities become, they affect us on spiritual, in spiritual circles or in devotional activities. We don't, happiness and distress or the results of one's devotional activities are not binding in any way. There's no karma. There is no... Uh, there is no attachments that come. We attach to serving the Lord and that is our attachment. The activity, the results of the activities belong to Krishna as they're offered to him in devotion. Okay. So whether they're good or bad by material definitions are incidental and has nothing to do with devotional service. Okay. So here, when Prabhupada ends the, the purport by saying, but simply by attraction of love for the personality of Godhead as the development Nara is highly affected. So coming to the platform of loving Krishna uh, automatically trans allows one to transcend the material energy like that. So love has to be developed, but hearing about Krishna and chanting his glories chanting his holy names, speaking his glories to others. These are all highly potent. I use the word potent, very powerful transcendental activities that awaken our natural love for Krishna. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhu Kamurai. 
Shravanadi Siddhi Chitte, Kodiya Yudai, in the hearts of all living entities, pure love for Krishna automatically exists as a con committing, as an absolute principle of existence. It doesn't have to be brought in from the outside, it exists within the hearts of all living entities. So by nature, we are transcendental as here, our Narada Muni is saying, yeah, he realized that he was transcendental, that the Lord was transcendental. And both because both of them are transcendental, they had, they had an eternal loving relationship on the spiritual platform. So the process of bhakti is there and the fast track in bhakti is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord uh, as much as possible. You'll find in many, uh, many statements by Srila Prabhupada, in which he corroborates in the scriptures that one should um, chant as much as possible, one should hear as much as possible. All these things will, all these activities will bring about a spiritual consciousness. Uh, our material consciousness is due to an intensification of absorption in the temporary. When we change that absorption to the eternal, that dissipates that uh, material consciousness and reawakens our spiritual consciousness. Like that. So the word absorption, there are st five stages of remembering Krishna. Um, one is to remember, one is to uh, remember in a more uh, consistent way. And then there's uh, different stages of remembering Krishna. And finally, when you get to the play, the statement of samadhi, samadhi means complete absorption in Krishna 24 hours. And there is no longer anything material about your existence. Although you still may have a material body, your material body has been spiritualized, just like when you place iron into a fire, if you leave that iron there for a prolonged period of time, the iron no longer has any material propensities or characteristics, it becomes like fire, and you, you can use it as fire. So in the same way, the material body becomes highly spiritualized when one is absorbed in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and engaging in devotional service like that. So um, therefore, this material world is an illusion we don't, we are not born, we don't die, we don't get sick, we don't get old, we're not, any of the definitions applied to the characteristics of the human beings in this material world, these are all, all related to the material body and we are not that material body. So we still have to work with it, just like we have to work with our car, uh, the car has value, it has use, it should be taken care of nicely, so everything is there, that it runs nicely, should be kept clean. Gets us to where we want to go, the same when this body can get us to where we want to go, back home, back to Godhead. Just like when you drive your car, you get in it, you get to where you're going, you get out of it. So at one point we got into this material body and if we perfect our life, then one point we'll get out of it. The car will stay behind and we'll go on to our eternal home, the spiritual world. So we should always remember our, our real identity. This is important. Although we may act on the material platform for the sake of social interactions and for the sake of getting things done on this platform, we should always understand we are an actor playing a role in this material tabernacle. None of these things have anything to do with us. The soul never touches matter. And this is interesting. The soul never touches the material energy as the soul is in the body, but never touches the body. Just like you should try to mix oil and water together 
they don't mix because their natures are completely opposite. So the, the soul cannot mix with the material energy, but it's covered by the material energy. Just like if you go to sleep at night, if you put a blanket over you, the blanket is covering you, but it doesn't mean you and the blanket become one. <laughs> You have nothing to do. The blanket is simply a covering. So this body is simply a covering over our real identity, the soul. <laughs> to awaken that realization, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord as much as possible. Bodhiyantas parasparam katiyantas chimam nityam tushyanti cha ramanti cha. Krishna explains in this verse that the thoughts of my devotees dwell in me, their lives are surrendered unto me. They derive great satisfaction and bliss in enlightening one another and conversing about me. So hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in association with others is the supreme process of spiritual awakening. It's the most direct and it's the most uh, satisfying doing our day-to-day -day services in relationship to our responsibilities is also devotional service but unless we hear and chant the glories of the lord also and make that foremost we have a tendency to see our activities in this world as related to the material world but they have nothing to do with it so we have to support our external activities by internal consciousness and that develops by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And then we can remember the Lord easily. And remembering the Lord, Taktwa Deham Purna Janmani Naiti Mamneti Surjana. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, thus, uh, when you know the transcendental activities of my birth in this material world, my transcendental activities and birth in this material world. Uh, upon leaving this body, you do not again take birth in this material world. The tendency is we don't have a taste for hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Because of our, our nature, we are more attached to doing things, but we should be more attached to, to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord because this is where the direct <clears throat> uh, connection with the spiritual energy is the most powerful like that. And, and when we're absorbed in that, we're no longer in this material world. And that'll be realized too, as we start to learn about Krishna, hear about Krishna, we develop an attraction for Krishna. We start to understand who Krishna is, what is his nature, why he does what he does, when we read about his pastimes in the, in the Srimad Bhagavatam or in other related literatures, we see how the Lord acts in relationship. We understand his nature. And then that also helps us to understand his relationship with us also. And uh, the attraction of the Lord's pastimes are so sweet uh, that they... Uh, the devotees who, who develop that attraction, they just want to hear more and more and more. Until that attraction develops, we have to practice hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. It's just like the uh, when a little child is first learning to walk, he uh, might stumble, fall, the mother is there to guide him, holds him up, lets him go, he trips, he falls again gets up as he practices then he eventually can walk on his own now the walking propensity is there within the child but it won't come out unless he practice so our love for krishna is within us but it has to be brought out through the activities of hearing and chanting his glories and serving his devotees also by serving his devotees that is the greatest form of service Okay, so this is a little bit about this particular verse. Narada Muni is explaining his transformation and his realization of himself along with his, his realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, 
sometimes, uh, many times, it amazes me how you give so much in such a short time, and it's uh, it's amazing, Mars. Thank you so much. Wonderful. If there are any questions from devotees, any comments, any reflections, any realizations, uh, please do. Um, you can either raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself and jump in. Uh, yes, Sri Davis has a power pack class. Absolutely. It's such a short time. It's so power pack. It's amazing. Thank you, Sri Devi. Um, you can either unmute yourself and just jump in and ask a question. Or you can raise your hand either way, but um, please uh, do ask your question or uh, re reflections, any, any thoughts you would like to ask. Marge, I have a question while others are asking you. When you started the class, Marge, you talked about identifying with the body and being in the material world with so many bombardments and you know, so sometimes we get caught up in the I, me, mine, or I we need this, I need that, and still trying to be in the path of Krishna consciousness. How can we try to step away from that identification, Maharaj? Well, aside from stepping away from the identification, we have to minimize our need, our, our material needs, where it's just basic. If we have any any needs or desires above what is actually basic, basic means what we need to live in this world, then Krishna will provide that automatically. We don't have to get so much caught up in trying to bring them about. But the point is that the, the identity is so strong because it's there for many, many lifetimes. Uh, there's, an, there's a terminology, it's called Nitya Bada. Uh, nitya means eternal and Bada means conditioned. Now, we are the word Nitya Bada doesn't really make sense because the soul is not eternally conditioned, but the word is used, the term is used. So what is it referring to? That our, our sojourn or our existence in the material world has so been so long-termed, millions of births, that we appear to be eternally conditioned, although we're not. So that eternal, not that eternal, that, that conditioning that comes with so many lifetimes of material association takes a while to get over, just like when you start taking a medicine, it doesn't mean the disease will be cured as soon as the medicine is applied. You may have to undergo some time until the disease dissipates or is removed. So take, uh, we have to keep practicing our role as a spiritual being and try not to identify with the external energy as being uh, there is needs that we have. We need to take. We need food. We need rest. We need. A, we need uh, association. We need to keep the body clean. We need some med medical uh, support. But it's all just like you have to wash the car. You have to change the oil. You have to tune up the engine. You have to change the tires. <laughs> So that's what we're doing to this body. We're doing its, you know, the maintenance it's required. But we have to understand that it's the body, it's not me. <laughs> we're working with something that is very close to us and appears to be something that is of our identity, but it's not. So getting out of this bodily conception of life um, means to really push back this long-term conditioning. So it takes, it takes time. That's why Prabhupada said, generally the process of bhakti is gradual. <laughs> it's gradual. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, there's a question here from Xavier. 
Bhakta Xavier, he said, Hare Krishna Marcus, accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. The love for Krishna doesn't need to be brought in just awakened. Is that also true with the demonic beings? Yeah, every soul has pure love for Krishna. Even those, demoniac just simply means uh, thoroughly conditioned, that's all. All living entities are part and parcel of Krishna. Mamai Vamso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. Sanatana, eternal, Jiva Bhuta, all living entities are my eternal parts and parcels. So even the demoniac, the demoniac are more covered by the illusionary energy. You can be just like sometimes Prabhupada would use the example, you're riding in your car and you have an accident. And then you get out and you talk to the guy who you crashed into and you say, you hit me. And well, no, I didn't hit you, I hit your car. Well, no, you hit me. So we get so identified with the car that we actually say, you hit me. So we identify so much with the material body that we think that what happens to the material body is happening to me, but it's not. So that's true with the demons too. The demons are Krishna's parts and parcels. Krishna loves the demons as much as he loves the devotees. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Samoham Samabhute Shunam Priya. I'm equal to everyone. I envy no one. I'm partial to no one impartial to anyone but then he goes on to say those who render devotional service they become connected with me in devotion the father has so many children and the father's love for each of the children is equal but the ones who obey the child get the favor of the father the demons don't obey the lord they reject the Lord and sometimes they they even hate the Lord or sometimes they even don't even believe the Lord exists. But still, the Lord's love for them is still there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, Bhakta Xavier said that that was helpful. Thank you. Are there other questions from devotees, other comments? Uh, reflections um, from Radha Bhakti. She said, I really appreciate the point that we are not our subtle body. It is a lifelong practice to try to become observers of our thoughts rather than identifying with them. Any practical tips on how to do this? Yeah, just uh, practically, I can give you an exercise that you can perform yourself, just go to Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, second chapter, verse 35, read the verse and carefully read the purport. And if you carefully read the purport, Prabhupada takes you step by step through how to see yourself different from both your subtle and gross bodies. He explains it in a systematic way with uh, great amounts of explanation. So that's a, it's a very uh, direct purport, 2 to 35. I don't know if we have time to go to through the whole thing because it is long. Uh, you go down the page, you can see how long it is. Let's see. Yeah, it's quite long, but uh, rather than answering you directly, I would suggest Radha Bhakti you read this purport. Thank you, Maharaj. I made a comment. I, I made a point for myself too. <laughs> um, are there any questions from other devotees? Any comments? Um, any? that you would like to ask. Yes, Sri Devi Mataji. Um, thank you, Anasuya Hare Krishna. 
Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. All glories to the assembled Vaishnavas. I have a question regarding our attachment. Uh, it's very clear that this I, me, mind business can keep us entangled in this material world. And I uh, struggle with being attached even to the things that I use in devotional service. For example, I used to iron Srila Prabhupada's clothes. Now I don't do that anymore. I'm in a different situation and my preaching activities are different. But I'm now attached to that iron thing. Oh no, maybe in the future I will get a chance to iron Prabhupada's clothes again. Or I have a sewing machine on which I used to sew for the DTs. I no longer have, I'm able to do that very much. But I think, no, no, I hang on to that sewing machine because maybe in the future when I get to Mayapur, I'll be able to sew. So like this, the things just go on piling up. Maybe I can use this. Oh, maybe I can give this to a devotee. Maybe I can. And so the attachment never seems to be decreasing. I just keep collecting and hoarding stuff, thinking I'll use it for someone or I'll use this fabric sometime in the future and so on. So just wondering how to deal with that energy. Oh, you're very economical. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, Guru Maharaj. Uh, well, you're trying. You're seeing everything that can, everything you have can be used in the service of the Lord, and that's good. But then again, um, sometimes we use a little formula. If you haven't used it in two years, then and then you don't need it. In other words, people collect, and then you have to see what you're going to use and what you're not going to use. Are you using it? Or you have plans for using it? So this is a practical thing. But if you keep accumulating things, then it's hard to... It's called Atyahara, collecting too many, too many things. And it's one of the ways to fall down in devotional service. Overeating and over collecting. So, you know, give things away. I also, you know, I like to collect books. I like to collect pictures. Sometimes I have so many pictures, I don't know where to put them all. <laughs> I have drawers full of pictures that I haven't even placed. <laughs> but I just keep them. So, you know, the paraphernalia that are meant for devotional service is not like paraphernalia that you need for sense gratification. It's different. But then again, you can still get into this... Uh, they call it a yukta vairagya, but it's more yukta than vairagya. So just give away things that you are no longer going to be directly using. Give it away to devotees and let them use those things. And or even people, people in general, since you're so much connected with the external society, you know. Just see, you have to see what, what you have and what you want and what, what you definitely will not use or something you may use, but you can't figure out how you will use it. <laughs> so. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. You know, it's, it's just a practical thing. If you have to keep moving, then you have to box all that stuff up and cart it. It costs money to, sh to ship it. Yes, Dr. Krishna Prabhu, you can answer the question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All praise to Srila Prabhupada, all praise to you. So wonderful to have your darshan and hear from you from this you know, on this morning. Maharaj, you did mention about, I did join a little late, so I apologize for that. But I think I heard you mentioned about getting absorbed in Krishna consciousness. 
So I'm just trying to understand a um, lot of things are mentioned in the purport, today's purport, like how can we get absorbed, uh, serving with body and then listen, here using mind in listening and chanting and all those activities. But most of the time, I, I can speak for myself, sometimes it seems like we are doing these services or chanting or hearing superficially, not really getting into it. What changes can I bring, Maharaj, uh, in my consciousness or in my mind or in my activities to try to get more engaged than uh, in Krishna consciousness? Well, you have to see what's, what's preventing you from getting absorbed. Is it time? Is there other things that are more important? Or there's just no, no taste for these things. Taste will develop as you practice performing the activities. If you just, just like they say, if you're chanting the holy name and you're chanting offensively, keep chanting and practice avoiding the offenses and then eventually you'll come to the stage of offenseless chanting. Uh, if you want to develop, just say you want to become a, a preacher. So Prabhupada said preacher means reader. Read, 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 read until the knowledge becomes more and more part of you. And then you can speak easier and more readily. So it's bhakti is practice. Bhakti is practice. And you have to see if there's something in your life that is causing you and not allowing you to get absorbed in these things, then you just have to see, well, maybe I don't, have, don't need to do these other things. I'll give you a ex practical example. One of the things that can help you develop attachment for chanting is to chant your 16 rounds first thing in the morning before you do anything else. As soon as you begin your chanting in the morning, don't, don't do anything until you finish 16 rounds. And if you do that every day, you'll find it might be a struggle, but after a while you'll develop a taste for chanting and then you'll start to see the benefits of continuous chanting instead of breaking your rounds up with a few here, a few there, a few there, later on like that. And then uh, another way is to schedule these spiritual activities in, into your day-to-day -day life where these times are fixed and you don't do anything else at those times. And I find devotees, when it comes to reading, if they have time, they read, and if they don't have time, they don't read. But if you make it a schedule, then at that time you will read. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. There is a question from Bhakta Brett. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Um, Maharaj, in your lecture at one point, you brought up um, comparing, you know, how we mix our spiritual life with material life. And you gave the analogy of how, you know, oil and water are not comparable. Like they don't mix together when we throw hot, a lot of hot water and there are a lot of or a lot of oil and hot water we see it explodes if we throw a little bit it sizzles um and the way i looked at that i looked at that as anartha as the oil touching with something it shouldn't the material touching with the spirit um and it also i was listening to your god brother the other night bhakti tirtha maraj and he was speaking on how some devotees hold their anarthas in and it's like boiling water with um a lid on it and how the lid rattles and rattles and steams and then you know, if there's too much, like you were saying, with the oil, it can blow up, and the lid pops off. And sometimes that's the only way devotees can get help is if they come to that boiling point, and they spill over, they need to take their lid off, they need that association. Um, but my question, Maharaj, is when that opening is there, when we do let those anarthas in, I believe um, that is the false ego. When we get caught up in our false ego, we lose that sense of awareness or understanding of Krishna, and we're more susceptible to you know, not in my, in my own opinion, in my own experience, not think 
you know, with that awareness of Krishna. So could you speak on how, how one can, can like inadvertently get caught up in their false ego, even in Krishna consciousness and how, how one can develop, you know, steps to, you know, experiencing their false ego less and less. Yeah, when we, when we act in devotion to Krishna with the desire to please Krishna, then the false ego is not at all present. If we're acting in devotion to Krishna with a particular motivation behind the activity, then the false ego is trying to get something from that activity. False ego is subtle. It directs the mind to fulfill its desires for some kind of gain, either on the mental platform or on the physical platform. So pure activities, I, I want to serve Krishna to please Krishna, that is without the false ego. So practicing coming to that consciousness means to be aware of the motivations behind your activities. Reflect uh, on your own motivations, your desires, why you're doing what you're doing. Is it for Krishna or is it for a combination of you and Krishna? Or is it just for you? <laughs> so uh, coming to that stage of the false ego is the last thing to go because it's the most subtlest and the most hardest to detect. detect. But in Bhakti Tirtha Swami's book, um, Beggar Number Four, he devotes the whole book to uh, the, the, the activities of the false ego. Mm -hmm. And how it is always looking for something. In other words, someone will come to you for some help. And then you'll give that person some advice and that person will go away feeling that they've got something really good, they're happy, they leave, they're satisfied. And then you take credit for being the well-wisher of that person. Well, that's a, a form of self, that's a form of subtle ego. By taking credit, that's, that's how the false ego wants to get something out of everything. But if we realize we're simply instruments in the service of the Lord and being given the tools we need to serve the Lord, either physical or subtle, in other words, the gross things we need and the subtle intelligence that comes, when we knew the, all these are coming from the outside, then we, then we simply act using these things for the service of the Lord. Credit goes to the spiritual master and the credit goes to the Lord. You give me, a, you tell me, build me a house and then you give me all the ingredients I need to build you a house and I build you a house and then I, I think it's my house or I take credit for the, for the house. All you did was build it Everything was given to you, including how to do it. The same way in devotional service. We're simply instruments for the Lord and for the Lord's pure devotee. That's all. Anything less than that is a principle of the false ego. Mm -hmm. Hey, Krishna, thank, thank you, Maharaj. I will definitely make it a note to read the bigger four and i thank you for your comment on we need to be aware of our motivation behind every action education yeah as we practice that we can start to see you know how we are approaching something whether it's out of duty out of happiness out of freedom from suffering or out of love there's four stages the lowest stage is I do something because I'm afraid if I don't, I get punished. Higher than that is I do it because it makes me happy. The third and higher stage is I do something because it's my duty. And the highest stage is I act out of love. 
Bhakti Vinod Thakur mentions these four motivations for activities. When you get on the platform of love, then there's no more false ego. Mm -hmm. Even on the platform of duty, there can be some elements of false ego, but by acting out of duty, we can get to the platform of love. But if we're inspired by happiness or personal gain, then we still have a long way to go. Hare hey, Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. Hare hey, Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Are there any other questions from devotees? Any um, comments? Any sharing? Anything that you would like to speak on? Share with us? Okay, Marge, I have a question. And you talked about that when you touched upon Sri Devi's question. And you mentioned Atihara. It's one of the easy ways of fall down in devotional service. Can you... Speak more about that, March. more explanation about that. Mm, that's mentioned by Rupa Goswami in his Nectar of Instructions. The, the second verse is Atyahara, Prayasa, Prajalpa, Niyamagraha, Sadhu Sangha. Yeah, Nectar of Instructions, verse number two. Atyahara prayasas cha prajampa niyamagraham jana sanghas chalayam cha sadbir bhakti vinashati. One's devotional service is one is spoiled, one becomes too much while eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. So that's that's atyahara. That's the first one. Go down and see what the purport looks like. We'll see what Prabhupada says. Uh, let's see here. This is bad. That, these purports are quite lengthy. Uh, the best is to uh, get Bhakti Vinoda Kaur's uh, commentary on this particular verse, which is called Bhakti Loka. It's a book called Bhakti Loka, and he commentate. He makes commentaries on verse two and three. The six. Uh, the six uh, things that are favorable for the execution of devotional service, the six things that are unfavorable. Adyahar is unfavorable. Mm -hmm. It's the symptom of the mode of passion to eat more and to want to surround themselves more with more material things. It's a false sense of security for the material body and mind. It's simply in the mode, it, it has nothing to do with the mode of goodness at all. It's simply the mode of passion. No, Prabhupada will speak a lot and then he'll get to the points later on in the purport. Thank you, Maharaj. I made a note of It's a real, yeah, Bhakti Loka by Bhakti Vinota Kaur really um, takes each one of these and tears it apart. Thank you, here it says here, everyone oh. requires possessions such as food grains, clothing, muddy, and other things necessary for the necessary for the maintenance. But one should not collect more than necessary for his bait. Actually, it is a natural principle followed. There will be no difficulty. I mean, according to natural living entities, lower on the scale, do not eat or collect more than necessary. Consequently, yeah. You know, Prabhupada uses example, a human being takes away the whole bag where the bird just takes what they need. Collecting and eating more than necessary also causes unnecessary ende endeavor. Okay. You, those of you who live in America, um, you drive along the highway, you see these big, gigantic uh, uh, store storage bins you can see them they're huge you can rent one and you can stuff you can put all your junk in it all the stuff that you'll never use you'll just stuff it in there and you'll feel good about it it's not in your house anymore and you still got it you pay rent on the storage place 
once in a while you go looking and see what you got and then you, you forget about it. <laughs> it's like <laughs> people have tons of stuff, just junk. Even I, if you go into most ISKCON temples nowadays and you start cleaning, you'll find that there's a lot of stuff that you can get rid of. Last year at this time, I was in one temple and we spent a month just cleaning out, getting, getting rid of the things that we didn't need, the temple didn't lead. It wasn't all the temple's fault. People who visit the temple used to come and bring things and just leave it there. Sometimes people don't want things and they think, oh, I'll just give it to the devotees. So the temples sometimes are just burdened with so much stuff that people just leave there thinking, well, maybe the devotees can use it. It's a, this happens a lot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but sometimes, you know, we also get infatuated by all the things on the markets and we want to, you know, make it, part of our collections. You know. So if you, eat, if, you eat, you, if you eat too much, you'll collect too much. That's, you'll find that's also connected. Those two things are connected. The overeating will cause you to over collect. So sometimes when you overeat, and you're over collecting for years and years, and then you start reducing your eating and you're getting it down to what you need. And you look around and say, boy, I got so much junk. All that junk was there due to the fact that you were overeating <laughs> for years. And now you can see it because now you don't see the need for it anymore. <laughs> so it, it's much so overeating, it's, simultaneously related to overcollect, like it goes hand in hand. Right, right. Wow. That's why it's put together in one particular statement. Atyahara means both. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mars. That was definitely an enlightening point. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions from devotees? Any um, comments, any sharing? I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. I can oh. I can make yes. a comment related yes. to what I, what I just said. The idea of overeating was a type of, it comes from a type of insecurity. It can when it's when it's continuous. When it's this verse doesn't refer to overeating occasionally. It means when one is continuously in that mood of eating too much. It's a kind of insecurity that comes with relating to the external as to fulfill our needs. So then, and then it carries over to the, to the point of trying to collect in the same way. So we surround ourselves with a lot of things. It's a type of insecurity because of our lack of relationship with, with Krishna. We're trying to replace that relationship with food, or with things. Thank you, Maharaj. Sri Devi said yeah, a very nice, it. great class. If Sri there Devi, are no, I'm sorry, Maharaj. What did what Sri Devi? What did you say about Sri Devi? What a great class is what she said. No, <laughs> this, is, this is basic stuff. <laughs> at, at least for me, Marge, I, you know, sometimes I need this constant, you know, little reminders every so often to keep me on track. But what you said was really, really powerful. I know, like just the relation with overeating and over collecting, that was really a wake up call. That, that was really nice. It's due to a lack of love. One is looking for love and then trying to replace that, that need for love in food and things.
That's that's the essence of the an artha. We're not feeling that loving relationship, so we're trying to experience it, yeah, through food or through things, or maybe through even through activities that we perform. Sometimes people just keep doing more and more things just to fulfill that need. But what they're really looking for is love, not so much activity. Thank you, Maharaj. Any questions from devotees? Any? Okay, uh, Sri Devi, so many takeaways and so many practical tips, yes. Yes, I agree, Sri Devi. Sometimes the practical tips really help with this, with my crazy mind. So that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Marge, um, would you like to um, end with the one round of chanting, Marge? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, there's never too much chanting. You can atyahara on chanting, it's good. Okay, let's see here what's going on here. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I want to look at myself when I'm chanting. But, all right. Look at this body anyway. So, Ready? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Shiva, Sri Gaur, Bhakti Vinod. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna Krishna Krishna. Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari Hari 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Krishna Krishna Krishna. Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare 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 Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari. Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Krishna Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. 
Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dvaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivindam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to the holy name of Lord Krishna, all glories to the assembled devotees. Devotees, thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to speak. Um, I love Srimad Bhagavatam and so when I ever get a chance to speak on Bhagavatam, I'm feeling very blessed. So by your mercy, thank you, I get a chance to speak. On another note, try to stay healthy. This is the uh, change in seasons now. Take uh, precautions in your health. Take some ginger regularly, zinc, selenium, vitamin D, vitamin C, good exercise, fresh air, uh, regular meals, and uh, you don't need anything else but personal hygiene to keep good health to build your immune system. Everything else is not necessary. So um, uh, we want the devotees to stay healthy, happy, and enthusiastic in their practice of devotional service. Hare Krishna. All Thank glory. you so much, Maharaj. All glories to the devotees. Sure. His Holiness Chandramali Swami Ki. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for a wonderful nectarian class. We are indebted to you for your mercy. <laughs> As long as you keep doing my translation on the transcriptions, I'm indebted to you. <laughs> it's a very small thing, Gurudev, very, very small thing. But what you're doing for all of us is just saving us from Maya. Thank you so much. Yeah, Maya is everywhere. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Anasuya, for really Thank you. Guru Maharaj. I don't know what is it about you, but Guru Maharaj just becomes so enlivened to come out of this class. Oh and my every God. class just becomes just unforgettable and unbelievably, you know, merciful and absorbing. So Thank you so much for this wonderful service that you're doing for all of us. It's because Chandramani Swami is so kind and merciful to me. It's <laughs> only by his mercy, completely by his mercy. I have nothing. Oh, uh, that's so humble. Thank you so much. Thank Lucy. you.